Hey friends. Well, I was about to head out the door and the Lord nudged me and said, wait a minute, come on back. Not so fast. Um, what about the episode that you're going to put out for his sparrow that we've been talking about all weekend? And so, yeah, God had been working on me about, um, a specific thought to share. And I just thought, well, I'll do it tomorrow or later. And the Lord's like, no, you're going to do it today. There's folks that are counting on it and there's people that need to hear it. And I gave you a word and you need to be faithful to share it. So this is all still so new for me. And I do want to thank those of you who've given just really encouraging words back. And, um, but I do have a really encouraging word to share with you. And here it is. Um, I'm going to show you my journaling Bible. Um, it's somewhere that I like to draw and do some artwork. And um, I was reading here in um, Numbers 9. And reading over this portion down here in um, verses 17 on. And I'm just amazed at this where <laughs> the children of Israel are in the desert and God tells them, you know, at the, to set up camp and then tear down camp. And like over and over that at his word, they camped. And then at his word, they would tear, to, tear, out, tear down the camp and set out. And it just happened over and over. And I got thinking about that and I thought, man, what a life. That would just be so hard. I wonder how many women were ready to tear their hair out, not knowing what they would prepare for dinner because they didn't know if they'd be tearing down the tent or setting up the tent. They were constantly on the move, waiting to hear God's command. And I, I realized then, you know, it was not about a destination. It was about obedience. God was training them to have an immediate obedience response time. And this really spoke to me when I saw that God was spending so much intentional time training them to obey him. And he wants that of us. He wants us to be so tuned into him that when he nudges us, that we know it's him, we recognize it's him, and then we'll obey immediately. And he's been in this kind of training with me. Um, you know, my neighbor has this horse that she does this extensive training with this horse that she can train him with her eyes. Like she can, he'll obey her with just a nudge of her finger. He'll go to the left or go to the right or dance. And it's amazing how well this large, mighty beast is so gentled and trained with just a nudge. I want to be that way. I want to be that way with God. I want to be so tuned into him that first of all, first of all, I hear his voice, that I know it's him. And then second, that I'll obey immediately. And um, he's He's sent me, there's times that I feel like he's actually sent me into um, obedience response time training. There was a, a period of time, I guess it was a couple years ago, he would wake me up in the middle of the night and nudge me to pray for somebody. And at this time, he had me praying for someone that I hardly even knew them. But God just put it on my heart to pray for them. And so he'd wake me up. And I usually don't wake up at night a whole lot. Wake me up and nudge me to pray. And I'd be like, okay, God. Okay, here I am in my nice warm bed. I'll pray. Here I am. Yeah, I'm praying. I'm praying for him. And he'd be like, no. I want you to get out of your bed and on your knees praying. Oh, how about this, God? How about if I just stretch my arms out? There we go. There we go. I can pray right here. My arms are stretched out. This is good, right, God? He's like, no. I want you out of the bed. This is in the middle of the winter, too. On your knees, praying for this person. Well, God, how about if I just roll over and I can kind of curl up and maybe kind of get on my knees with the covers over me and pray? No. He said, no. <laughs> get out of bed and get on your knees. And pray for this person. So eventually, I would. But after like so much time wrestling, sometimes up to an hour or more of just wrestling with with doing it. And then when I would do it, it would be like this huge sense of peace 
and relief. I'd crawl back in bed and go back to sleep. And he did this with me over and over. And so finally, like I went to bed anticipating this, like this is going to happen. He's going to wake me up again. And this time my ORT, my obedience response time, I'm not, is going to be a new PR, a new personal record. Like I'm not going to sit there and wrestle with God. I'm just going to do it. So of course, yeah, he wake me up in the middle of the night. Michelle, get up and pray. Get on your knees. Boom. Get up, crawl out of bed, get on my knees. And I'm like, yes. I did it, a new ORT. We beat our record, God. And when I started seeing it, um, almost like a game, a challenge, it was wonderful. I could get back to bed and to sleep so much quicker. And so now when I'm out and about, and I feel that what I call a God nudge, where in my spirit, God's saying, you need to go speak to that woman or you need to go pray with someone. And he does some really crazy things that I'm like, God, and there's times that I want to wrestle with him and say, I, I don't think that was you. I don't, I don't think so. I think that was just in my head. And there's times I've not obeyed. And, oh, I tell you, I, I know it was him because the, the feeling, it's just like it's a withdrawal that comes from me, just a sadness that I missed it. I missed the blessing. And, you know, I have found that the shorter my ORT, the shorter my obedience response time, then the greater my blessings and the greater, even more that he'll start doing that. If he's like, I know I can count on you, Michelle. I know that when I nudge you, that you'll obey and you'll do it. It just happens over and over. And I tell you what, there's nothing like it. It is just fantastic waking up in the morning and saying, okay, God, tune me in. Help me to be aware of it. Help me be, you know, like know when you nudge me and to follow that, that nudge when there's that obedience. There are such great blessings. The most amazing things have happened and people have been blessed and I've been blessed. So I want to challenge you with your obedience response time to first of all, take time in the morning to tune in to God. Basically, that looks like praying. I mean, of course, you're going to be in the word, but praying and asking God, give me your eyes, give me your ears, give me a heart, Lord, that is so tuned into you that I know when you nudge. And give me the courage, Lord, to just follow through in obedience, no matter how crazy it is. A lot of times it's crazy. It feels crazy. It looks crazy, but it ends up being him. Um, there was only one time that I felt there was a God nudge and I followed through and the person refused what I was offering. I thought, God, I really thought I was obeying you. Well, come to find out weeks later, I did do the right thing. It was they were not ready. They refused his blessing, but I was in, I was right. And God did let me come about in another way to be able to bless that family. So here's our challenge today. And it's taken from numbers nine, go back and read like 15 to 23 um, and yield yourself to God's nudgings, allowing him to tear down camp and tell you when to set up camp and when you are to stop and when you're to go. It's a wonderful life. It's an adventurous life. And so we'll both challenge each other today to have a, a, a new PR in our obedience response time. Thanks.